in this video, I want to show you an example of how to assign cost to units for a company that uses process costing, specifically the weighted average method. So let's take a company called Fitz's Root Beer, and they're a manufacturer and they use process costing for their bottling department. Okay, so they might have other departments, but let's just focus on the bottling department. So they bottled 2,000 units of root beer during the period, and then at the end of the period, they still have 500 units that are still being processed. Okay, now the 500 units that are still being processed are 100% complete with respect to direct materials, but with respect to conversion costs, which are direct labor plus manufacturing overhead, it's only 80% complete. Okay, so think about it like this. They poured all the root beer in the bottle, so it's 100% complete, those 500 units that are still left, but there's other work that needs to be done, some direct labor, some overhead. So the question is, how do we assign costs? Because we're gonna have costs that were already in work in process at the beginning of the period, and then we have costs that are incurred during the period. How do we assign those costs? Because if you think about it, there are some units that were completed and we bottled it and we did all the labor, all the conversion costs, everything, and those 2,000 have been transferred out of the department. Okay, they either went to the next department or if this was the final department, then they're in finished goods inventory. Okay, so those 2,000 are done, but there's the 500 that are still in process. And how do we assign these costs? How do we split the costs up among those different units, okay? The ones that are still in, in, in process and the ones that have been transferred out. So to do that, we need something called the cost per equivalent unit. And I showed you how to calculate that in the last video, uh, but it's basically 49 cents a unit for direct materials, 60 cents a unit for conversion costs. And in case you didn't see that video or you need a refresher, here's how those calculations were made, okay? So got the conversion costs over here and then over here, the direct materials, okay? So we've got our cost per equivalent unit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply that. So we're gonna go, so let, I'm gonna try and make a table, make it simple for you to follow. So costs assigned to the units that are completed and transferred out of the department during the period, that's the 2000 where we said, look, they've been bottled. We've done all the labor we need to do. We did everything. They're out of this department. Okay, so the units that are completed and then the units that are still in process. Okay, so let's start assigning these costs. So the units that are completed We'll start with direct materials. So 2,000 times 49 cents. Okay, so that's gonna be 980, 980, okay. And then with the cost per equivalent unit for conversion costs for the ones that were completed, we have 2,000, 2,000 times 60 cents. Okay, so that's gonna be $1,200. That's gonna be $1,200. So then if you were to say, so, so this is basically saying, look, the ones that were completed, $980 of the direct materials costs should go to the, should be assigned to those units that were completed. And $1,200 of the conversion costs should be assigned to those that were completed. So if we were to add up and say, what is the total amount that should be uh, assigned to the bottles that were completely finished during the period? $2,180, okay? We just add the, the costs that were from direct materials, the costs that were from conversion costs, okay? So, now uh, bear in mind, the only, the only thing that's really tricky here is we use the cost per equivalent unit for direct materials and the cost per equivalent unit for conversion costs. We don't use the same cost per equivalent unit for each one. Now, the units that are still in process. So, there's 500 that are still in process for direct materials and they're 100% complete with respect to direct materials. So we don't have to do any adjustment to get to equivalent units because there are 500 equivalent units. So 500 times 0.49, okay, that's gonna be $245, okay. Maybe I should write this out. So that's 500 times 0.49, okay. And this up here was 2000 times 0.49 and this here was 2000 times 0.60. Okay, so you can just so you can see where the numbers came from. And then of course this was just these two things added together. All right. Now, the units still in process for conversion costs, 500, but here's the thing. It's 500, but they were only 80% complete with respect to conversion costs. So the equivalent units is really 400. And that's just 500 times 80%, okay? So we're gonna take 400 and we're gonna multiply, so let me see here, 400 
times 0 0.60, the cost per equivalent unit. Okay, and so that's going to be $240 of the conversion costs are assigned to the units still in process. Now, let's say we're going to add this together because we want to say, well, what's the total? What's the total amount of costs of whether it be direct materials or conversion costs that are assigned to the units that are still in the bottling department, still uh, they haven't been transferred to the next department because they're not completely been finished by this department yet. The cost assigned to them would be $485. And then the cost assigned to the bottles that were done with this department, like they, they've been moved on to the next department, or if this was the final department, it goes to finished goods inventory, those costs, the ones that were completed and transferred out, was 2180